<laughs> hey family welcome back watch out a lot of y'all here your favorite life relationship strategist and i help women that are married or in the long-term relationship stop to feeling disconnected and unloved and shift them to feeling understood appreciated all while creating the intimate moments that she wants needs and deserve now you keep coming back to marshawn oh because you want to be a part of the top one percent of couples that have extraordinary relationships and so now we're going to talk about relationships today of course we are i mean that's why you come back right uh, but specifically today we're going to talk about how to improve yourself before you jump into your next relationship yes you not the other person not your ex not the soon-to-be person but yourself we have to take a long look in the mirror and figure out why things are not going the way that we would like for them to go and guess what you are the only common denominator that is in every single one of those relationships whether they go the distance or not so it's very important for you to get you together before you get into your next relationship and so the first thing that you need to do, I'm going to give you five tips. The first thing is to ask yourself a lot of questions in order to reflect on why things did not work out and or go the distance. We have to sit down. We have to stop jumping from relationship to relationship and think that all of the things that were quote unquote bad, all of the things that just kept resurfacing, all of the conversations that we never had, why didn't the relationship go the distance? What was not happening what was you not doing what were you not saying what things were happening that should not have been happening so it's time for you to take a deep dive into yourself sit down and write down all of the things that kept coming up in your relationship and even if not this relationship if you notice that you keep going through the same things over and over again with a different guy or with a different girl but it's the same thing that is the thing that you need to sit down and reflect on and figure out why this thing keeps happening why do i keep getting pissed off so much when he wants to leave or when she wants to leave why do i feel like i need to know where he is, he or she is at at all hours of the day and whom they're with and where they're at and when time they coming back sit down and figure out all of those things and why it's unhealthy for these things to keep occurring you have to figure out the why and once you know the why then you can get some some information some data points to, to start working on things to make things better for you but then also for the next person that you attract because when you're better you're going to actually attract someone else that is just as good or working on themselves like you are so that's the first thing sit down and ask yourself a lot of questions and reflect on them and how you can be better so the same things do not keep coming up over and over and over again sorry about the wind y'all uh the next thing believe that you're worthy of a healthy relationship you know sometimes i actually ask my clients this. actually this is a staple question so not sometimes i ask them this all the time but anyway i ask them one of the questions that i ask them is do you think that you deserve to be in a healthy relationship and i get a lot of yeses which is positive it's great but then there are the no's or the i don't know or the why should i right these are the things that you need to start thinking about before you jump into the relationship because if it's not an emphatic yes i'm worthy of a healthy relationship then it's actually a no and if it's a no guess what you're not ready for a relationship because every single thing that you keep going through over and over and over and over again you're going to continuously keep going through those things over and over and over again so if it's not an emphatic yes that i am worthy of a healthy relationship then it's a no and if it's a no that's fine but do not get into another relationship save yourself the stress save the other person the stress work on yourself get you together get you together before you jump into another relationship the third thing that i want you to work on is applying what you've learned from your reflection questions yes so once you decide that you know what i've actually done some work on myself i know why i act this way or react this way because you sat down and actually answered the questions and you answered them truthfully you answered you're answering these questions for yourself you're not answering from anybody else even if you're working with a coach or a therapist or something you are doing the work for you so you can get a better understanding of you yes the coach and therapist can help drive and, and pull it out of you 
right? Because they're trained to do so. However, this is all for you so you can get a better understanding of who, what, when, where, how about yourself. So apply what you've learned in your reflection questions. So if you have written down in your reflection question that, you know what, I'm always clingy. I feel like I feel like he's actually going to leave me or she's going to leave me. And then you actually realize that that came from one of your parents or your guardians leaving you or even a sibling leaving you when when they, they, they were your safe, safe space. And then they decided that they had to get away for whatever reason. And then you felt abandoned because of that. Maybe that's why you're so clingy. Maybe that's why you need to know where he or she is at all hours of the night. I'm not saying that it's healthy, but at least you know the why. And once you know the why, then you can start working on it. So understand what your whys are. Why am I acting this way? Why do I feel so sad when I don't get my way? Why, why, why? Ask as many why questions as you can so you can get a deeper understanding of who you are. And then apply them, as I mentioned. So that's number three, applying what you learned in your reflection questions. Number four. Do not accept the same things you didn't like this time around. So what I mean by this is the next time you get into a relationship, the next time you see that fine guy, the next time you see that sexy woman and you guys decide to get into a relationship one-on-one, -on -one, remember the things that you reflected on. Remember the things that you hated. Remember the things that you disliked in your last relationship because you actually took notes so you know what those things are. Remember those things. And then do not accept them this time around because guess what? You're going to continuously keep going through and down that same rabbit hole that you did once before. So if you know for certain that that this person that you, okay, if you know for certain that you are a person that needs quality time and you that's what you was begging for in your last relationship. But this new guy, this new girl actually comes along and they seem relatively good for you, but y'all have different shifts and you know that you cannot handle that. That is not something, that is not a situation that you should push yourself into. It's not, because you're not gonna be able to handle it and guess what, it's going to end anyway because you're not strong enough to handle that. And it's okay. Being aware and being conscious of what you can and cannot handle is perfect. See me, for instance, I can't handle being cheated. I know that that's my that, that's not my area. I'm not one of the the quote unquote strong women to know that you can cheat on me and I'm there for you. No, that that's that that's not the way that I'm set up. It's not. I know that about me. My husband knows this about me. So I can't make him not cheat on me, right? I know what I can handle. So if it goes down. I know I got to make some tough decisions. Just saying, know what you can handle and do not accept it when it comes your way. Now, what I can handle and what you can handle might be completely different. So do not compare your relationship to anybody else's. Don't even compare your relationship to what I just said, because maybe you're a person that can handle that. I am just not set up that way. Okay, so. Do the thing that you know works for you and do not try to do what somebody else does. Sit down and think about all of the things that you know that you cannot handle. All of the things that you did not like that last go around or even the last two or three go rounds. Write all those things down and then put them on a piece of paper. Put them somewhere that you can see them, especially when the fine guy comes, especially when the fine girl comes. So you know, you know what, this is not something that I can handle and you can walk away sooner other than getting yourself entangled. Okay, yeah, I used it. Entangled in the situation that you're going to regret later on. Know your worth. Know your worth. Know that you are strong enough to say no and actually mean it and it's okay. This is not the last guy. This is not the last girl. They're just not for you because you have to know where your boundaries are. Cheating for me is a boundary. It's my boundary. It doesn't have to be your boundary, but know what your boundaries are and be able to enforce them, stick to them. The last thing to do is slow things down because we have a tendency in this new day and age to go really, really fast and not ask enough questions and then jump into the relationship and then wonder why things are going down south. Wonder why you really don't know this person and, and sometimes, but a lot of times, 
we interject and throw in sex too soon. And anytime sex is thrown in too soon, we stop getting to know the person that is across the bed from us or across the table from us or sitting on the same couch with us because the only thing that our eyes are seeing and what our minds are reminding of mind reminding us of is the fun time that we had the last time that we seen him or seen her and so it actually interjecting sex too early cripples each and every one of us yes cripples each and every one of us from being able to see some of the red flags being able to see you know what i just now nah, we ain't on the same page being able to see mm, yeah that's not something that i really want to be intertwined in slow things down so you can ask the questions that are important for you so you can see the red flags and most of all so you can see if his or her words match up to their actions because each and every one of us can say a whole lot of words but if my actions if your actions if his actions if her actions are not matching up to what the words are saying then it does not matter so you have to be able to slow things down so you can actually see and you see how my glasses are tinted? Take those tinted glasses off so you can actually see what's there and not what you want to be there. Now, if you need some help in this area, do not hesitate to send me a message. I have my email address down below. You can actually schedule an appointment down below at marshano.com. Or if you're on Facebook, you can send me a DM. If you need some help, let's have a conversation. I love you guys. There's nothing that you can do about it. And of course, subscribe and give me a like. Love you. Bye now.